Um, as a child, I think I was pretty much the tomboy, always scratches on my knee, always in a part of my body that had to not make it into the bathtub because it was scratched and bruised, climbing trees. I remember visiting an aunt of mine with a cousin uh, in Zimbabwe, on the roof of her house, but the only reason she caught us was because the dogs were waiting there below. Um, but yes, I was adventurous, I was one of the guys. I remember at the age of 21, I mentally told myself to start dressing more feminine, like embrace my femininity and, you know, yeah, enjoy everything that comes with being a girl. So. Funnily enough, I remember in Standard 7 we made our first ever book where you bound it yourself, you, you covered it in a pattern of your choice and it started with everything from your family tree and at the very end was what do you want for your future and I remember I had said I like um, India but I had a romantic idea of India as this place of beauty and spice and food and I said I wanted to be a film director. I even drew a little picture of the director's chair and when I was flying to Malaysia like years later uh, it was in India but I had a surreal moment of, of like oh my gosh if I could get that last page of that book I'm going to study mass media with a major of course in film and television that would have been that was very surreal for me. Malaysia was fantastic I think it took a while <laughs> But to click, the first few years I felt like I was on holiday. I tried all the food. They have three different races there. It's Indian, Chinese and Malay. So you never run out of things to try food wise. As a student, it's great because it's cheaper to travel. You can just put a backpack, put your, uh, get your backpack and uh, explore. Uh, it was great being a student there. Um, but Recently I've been thinking, everything I still like to do, I chose mass communication because it had photography, it had graphic communication which meant I got to draw in a once in a while, uh, you got to write, it had all my favorite elements, but maybe um, had the youth is wasted on the young, I, I should have really capitalized on all those lessons then and there. Was I to do the exact same thing now? I think I'd put my heart and my soul into it more because I have a better idea of where I want to go than when you're young and just trying to pass class. So in Malaysia, um, every time they wanted people to be like uh, uh, the black face in the crowd or in an advert, they'd come to our school because it was international and pick a couple of African faces. So you used to make a decent buck being a, fa a face in, in, in the crowd there. But I got to also see the production lifestyle. People live in a production house. There's a kitchenette and a TV and a sofa, not because it's a fun place to work, but because you'll spend so much hours in there. Um, the glamour <laughs> and versus the reality, you know, I, I, I got to see the difference there. The girls in cargo pants and sneakers, lifting bags and cameras, I'm like, maybe I'll stick to the writing uh, because that is a little too real for me. Like I got to see where in the big picture I want to, to be. So not once did I ever think I'd want to be in front of the camera, or in front of the mic where I am now, but I thought I'd write for TV or books or whatever it was I, I didn't think I'd be in, in front of the camera but I came home and my cousin told me they're looking for newsreaders at Duma FM I had it in my mind that I was gonna spend a, a month just relaxing because I felt like once you start working you're never gonna get a month to yourself to just relax but my mother's like this is Sultana you need to get a job with this room <laughs> sleeping all day in my house and I knew if she heard what there was a job opening that I didn't go and apply for as ill-fitted to it as I thought I would be I would have been in trouble so I went not expecting to get the job but they were like we love your voice come Monday and that's how I ended up uh, reading news at Dumai FM and then a year in, some months in, uh, RB2 advertised for radio presenters and I was like, I'm in this field now, I'd love to work for a station that's been there much longer than the one I was currently at. I thought, you know, it would give me more training experience, they'd have a wealth of experience to show me and I applied, I auditioned along with many, 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 many other people and I was selected uh, with the final three and then while at mass media, I auditioned to read news on BTV. My current boss saw my audition tape and stole me for 
my presenting job. And that's how I got to do what I'm doing right now. What's nice about my job is that I get to do, go to places that you wouldn't normally get access to. If a film director is in town, you're like, can we have a one-to-one? -one? You know, you get to speak to CEOs, you get to speak to ministers, get answers for things you may want to know, but not always have access to those people. That is the coolest thing about my job. And although it's a business program, we our content is quite broad. We'll touch on everything from fiscal policy to the fashion industry. So it's been interesting in that. And I've also grown. I think it'll be experience where you keep flexing those writing muscles. I not only present, but um, I'm involved in pre-production. We conceptualize. I write the scripts. You know, it's, it gives you the confidence. It's one thing to learn something, but actually doing it and seeing it materialize is very emboldening. Um, but being a freelancer in Botswana, you have to be prepared for a lack of security you know you it is one project after the next you have to be prepared mentally for it being less secure than a nine-to-five plans going forward I have recently <laughs> um, come to make peace with the fact that my interests are so broad I was sitting with a friend just the other day I had such a what's the word enlightening conversation I like I'd like to learn more about money you know, I want to know finance, but I still like the visual arts. I still like to write. I feel like my interests are pulling me in different directions. She's like, you are actually placed where you are exercising those very things, you know? So I think it's just really doing what I do, but consistently better and better and better. I don't think you can ever master it. Well, I'm nowhere near mastering it. Married life has been awesome. I think it's a year and, a, and some months in. And in the preparation to getting married, you'll hear everybody's views about marriage, what it's like, and people will have certain expectations. You also come to see the, real, the expectations you had had, but you didn't even know you had about being married until you're married and you're saying to your husband, let's do one, two, three. Let's not watch television anymore. Because I always thought once we're married, we'll sit at the table and talk all the time and these are expectations I didn't even know I had so the poor guy of course didn't know he had as well but I think our highs uh, have been more than our lows but it's been actually very few challenges it's just personality learning to live with someone and yeah we've had a great year after people had really scared us but that first year of marriage is gonna be the worst uh, but what you're learning is that your marriage is your own and you you just have to keep it as that at the core of a marriage is you and me we like each other we like to spend time together you're my favorite person let's not think too much uh, about everything else let's not spoil a good thing and pure christian life uh funny enough i got saved in malaysia i told you how my first few years i felt like i was on holiday it was oh yeah experience on experience and not always pure experiences. I was experimental to the end. If you saw my pictures of my younger self, I think there's one with me with green contact lenses and bright red hair at a rave. It's a very different Namitsu from the one people have come to see now. But I got saved while I was at school. So my last two years in Malaysia were 180 degrees different from how I'd been there. Um, in the beginning so one of my funniest memories of that is I was in church and it was a Chinese church and I see one black girl in in the service and she was Motswana so I'm all excited like hey after church where are you going should we ride together and she's pretty quiet the entire time until she turns and says I'm sorry you have to forgive me but you are the last person I expected to see in church that's how big of a change it was I think also seeing people who not only said they were Christian but were aspiring to live the Christian life. Uh, saving themselves before marriage, I had never seen that. Um, valuing family over other things, I don't know, there's a whole lot of things, complex things that come with uh, coming to know God but I think the purest which people grow away from is when you first encounter God, you're like yay! God loves me. I, ha I don't have to fight to be something different. He, lo he made me like this, so you're going to love it or hate it, but he made me me, and I have to be me all the time. Uh, and 
that was, there was just something so ah, very spirit and soul warming, you know, where you, where you, I think when you're young, you're influenced by so many things, trying to be some who you think you're supposed to be instead of discovering your own unique shape because I think everybody's journey is important and not everybody will get to be who you are and who, what the role you're supposed to play in this world. Bot 50, like every other coming of age, like even a personal coming of age, uh, helps, makes you want to take stock of where you are and where you're trying to go. Um, I think Botswana is at a crucial point where we are being told we need to diversify for us to um, go on into the future. And more than ever, we are realizing the potential and the importance of human capital. So it's up to each and every one of us. The things we're complaining about um, that we see out there, until you bring your best self to your work, don't expect to get the best out of everybody else. Uh, the change you want to see, you're going to have to start it. You want more professionalism? Be more professional. You know what I mean? If you want um, departments and structures that are more dependable, you need to get your act together and be the people we need for this country to go forward. Okay, I love my wedding ring. Um, I had it made. I didn't want, I looked and looked and looked for rings, um, but it was all like the little apahare in the band. I'm not saying that in it, there's anything against that, but I really wanted something that was more me, that I wouldn't feel like there's a rock on my hand all the time that was beautiful. And I had this made, it's rose gold, some diamonds. I really love it. Um, although some people find it, I think it's a love it or hate it piece. Some people are like, oh, that is so unique. That's so gorgeous. And people are like, what is that? Is that a fashion ring? Is that copper? But I love it. So, and that's all it needs to be. And it reminds me, like I said, your marriage is unique. It's you and your partner and no one else. Well, and God. Yeah, you need God huh? to, to be the best for each other. And um, this is a picture I drew of my husband. The last thing I've drawn in a long time. I keep saying I will draw every year I set myself goals I don't do it but this one was because it was his birthday I had nothing for him and I kept telling him I'm an artist he's like show me don't tell me so this was my show him and it was for his birthday it's a picture I got of him as a child I stole it his sister helped me steal it and then I drew it and I surprised him with it on his birthday he says he loves it and it hopefully will encourage me to keep picking up um yeah keep trying to develop that part of my interest.